so uh, you know who am i uh, i run uh, i'm prasanna i run upeka we are an accelerator for b2b saas companies uh, we help uh, b2b saas founders grow faster and more capital efficiently and make fewer mistakes been doing this since 2017 we are now at the 12th cohort and i think uh, we have worked with about 108 startups and we have uh, uh, worked with about 200 plus founders uh, we only work with b2b saas companies uh, and uh, out of the first i think 20 startups we have three startups that have crossed 5 million dollars we have another six startups that have crossed a million dollars in arr Uh, and we have another uh, four i think exits in the first 20 and we also have uh, i think the, the rest are probably growing uh, most of most of them are capital positive uh, only a handful of uh, raised capital because um, you know uh, when you're profitable and you're growing you may not necessarily need more capital right um and our next cohort uh, our newest cohort starts next week If any of you are interested, please apply to our next cohort. Applications will open in June and July, and we'll be starting the cohort in I think September. All right, that's my uh, pitch. So pitch is done. Uh, so let's talk about you know playbooks and why uh, what events, right? So when we look at playbooks in 2011, uh, folks who were doing the playbooks, the playbook that was then the rage was e-commerce of Dash in India, right? and when fresh work started and they were trying to fundraise in 2011 uh, nobody would fundraise them why because uh, you know e-commerce companies were getting fund- funded left and right uh, but fresh works as a b2b smb saas company there was nothing that matched that playbook right the e-commerce of x playbook was getting funded but what the hell is fresh works and then in 2015 or 16 or 17 ironically uh, by then fresh works was looking like it would succeed Uh, and the playbook that freshworks established was basically high velocity sales in the existing market and a company called watfix uh, was doing something different and had significant fundraising challenges so the vcs who were pattern matching on the high velocity sales playbook uh, missed watfix essentially right and so if you use playbooks you know uh, the playbook may not remain the same across multiple years and that kind of pattern matching may not necessarily work out in the long term Uh, and that is a fundamental problem in many of the things we do whether it's product management whether it's uh, startups whether it's investing or so many other things that we do in life right uh, so the playbook approach essentially is that you know um, let's say you're playing a chess game and uh, you can't actually see the board and all you can see is the moves and so the moves that you see is you know you see a pawn move and then a pawn move and pawn move and the pawn move and the pawn move and the pawn move there's a queen move and then there's a queen move and you win right now you if let's say you never knew that a chess board existed and you never knew where chess pieces were on the board you would try to figure out what sequence of moves makes uh, victory possible uh, and you could probably use some ai ml to figure out what sequence of moves should you do when the other person makes this sequence of moves but literally you would be more than half blind right and let's say that you have a map which then says you know what are the sequence of moves and you know how a particular sequence of moves leads to you know victory uh, a victory condition right uh, then of course with the visual the map these moves certainly make a lot more sense and you're able to learn that game and play that game a lot lot better right uh, now the unfortunate thing is that from business perspective uh, many times we are all playing blind we actually don't know the map uh, we actually don't know the territory and we are trying to play a game basis somebody said you know do 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 these set of moves and you will win but you know the territory that they may have been playing in the territory that we are playing in may be completely different but we are oblivious to it and trying to make up uh, rules as they go along right uh, so now many of you uh, if you pms you would know uh, what strategy is right uh, we want to do something in somewhere by doing something right so you could consider it as like we want to grow to 10k mrr in global wind market saas by leveraging best practices of past indian saas founders so this could be the strategy that you use right 
So now when you think of strategy and how do you derive strategy, the where, the where to play is critical. And too often that where to play is picked up because of you know past history and without realizing that the ecosystem and the landscape that we are playing in right now may be very different from the ecosystem and the landscape that we have played in in the past. Right? Now every uh, every technology has gone through these four phases of evolution and they're critical to understanding the what you have. Okay, uh, and so let me tell you how uh, one way of thinking about it is. Uh, so you can see these four stages, genesis, custom, product, and commodity. And one axis is certainty, the other axis is ubiquity. What this means is that the certainty axis is how certain are you that if you uh, buy something that uses that particular technology, it will work. And on the other hand, from a ubiquity perspective, how easy or common is it? Right? So let's take some examples. If you take uh, electricity, uh, batteries were available literally uh, 2,500 years ago. The Sumerians made some clay batteries that work, uh, but it was like magic, right? It might work, it might not work. Uh, you do it again, it might work or not, and so on and so forth. Very, very flaky kind of technology, right? And then about 150 years ago, uh, people started building uh, specific variants of electricity, right? About 150 years ago, you could get a generator of uh, which would be attached to say a, a coal powered uh, steam engine and that would give you a certain type of electricity maybe it would give you 12 volt dc maybe another thing would give you 110 volt ac another thing might give you 15 volt dc and so on and so forth right so everybody had different uh, things right different types of electricity and so at a product kind of a stage when you're looking at it uh, there would be, you would have to choose what kind of an electricity do you want to get. Then about 100 years ago, electricity started getting commoditized. What that means is that I, as a consumer of electricity, you know, there's a socket in the wall, I have a plug. If I put it in, my expectation that is that 99.99% of the time it works, right? Uh, versus in the magic kind of a situation, maybe it only works one out of 100 times. And in between in the custom and the product kind of a situation, maybe it works you know, in the custom kind of a situation, maybe it works two out of 10 times. In the product kind of situation, maybe it works nine out of 10 times. Uh, but in the commodity kind of a situation, you expect it to work 99.999% of the time, right? Uh, so that is the certainty axis. And the ubiquity axis is wherever I go, the same plug is there. I take my, you know, pl plug point and I can uh, put it into the socket and it should just work, right? So that's the ubiquity of it. I, I go anywhere in the world, I'm on a plane, I'm on a ship. I expect that the same kind of a power works, right? So that is what commodity means. Now, every technology is going through these cycles and you'll see that is an S curve where uh, what happens is that in the early phase, you know, the certainty is like growing, but it's like really, really low. The ubiquity is really low. It feels like magic, it is like magic. Uh, and, you know, uh, by the time you it becomes custom, you know, uh, it becomes a little better. It kind of sort of works many times. Uh, but custom is also where there are a lot of failures because for everybody who's adopting, it might be different. Then you get to product, you have some choices. You don't know which is the best choice. Uh, you might have certain parameters to evaluate the choice. Somebody else might have different parameters to evaluate the choice. And so they're comparing products. They know that it provides electricity, but I don't know whether I want this one or this one. And finally, at commodity, you don't even know how it's coming to you. You only know that it's coming to you, right? So in the electricity case, you can think of, you know, a uh, very funny uh, anecdote that I read was in the 19, as late as the 1930s, in the 1940s, uh, you know, a British uh, underground metro station had uh, 15 or 20 different types of electricity. Uh, they had 5 volt DC for something, 9 volt AC for something else. Uh, 25 volts DC for something else, 17 volts AC for something else. They literally had like 15 to 20 different types of electricity that they had to use to keep the station running because the station had bought different things which use different um, different types of electricity. And so therefore to maintain that station, they needed that kind of a spread of uh, you know both power and converters and all of that stuff just to keep it running, right? And of course, you can imagine 
that if you go from that situation into a commodity situation, your cost would fall down dramatically because now all my spares would be similar, all my wiring would be just one wiring, not 10 wiring and so on and so forth, right? And so that is an analogy that I think if it would be useful for all of you to keep uh, in mind when you think about, you know, what is Genesis, it's magic in Sumeria 2,500 years ago to what is commodity about 40, 50 years ago, electricity was available everywhere, plug it in, you get it. Uh, the only thing that matters in a commodity is, you know, price, uh, reliability, and, uh, you know, if there's a quality parameter, quality of some kind, right? Uh, but other than that, you don't care, right? Uh, you, you, you don't care where it's from, you don't care which, where the electron is from. Uh, okay, so now we look at uh, the second part of uh, the Wadley map, which is value, right? And this is the part which actually creates, uh, you know, enormous, enormous amount of uh, value for founders and product managers. Uh, because most of the time, uh, when we as product managers, and I've been a product manager at Amazon in the past very briefly, uh, but I was a product manager at some, I, I wasn't called a product manager, but I was doing that role in a couple of startups that I did as well. Uh, but essentially, uh, you want to understand the value that your product is delivering to a customer, right? And so the value that your product is delivering to a customer, who is that user of your product who's getting that value? So that's what you start with. And that is the anchor of the map because any, any map, any kind of a 2D territory, if you want to say, hey, you know, there has to be a starting point, what should that anchor be? Uh, in this case, we are picking the user as the anchor for what they need, right? And so we pick a, you know, classic simple trivial example. A user wants a cup of tea. Uh, to make a cup of tea, you need a teacup and you need tea. Uh, and you need the, to make the tea, you need hot water. Uh, you need to make hot water, you need kettle and water, and of course, to make the tea, you also need tea leaves, right? And so this is generically the, uh, you could draw a graph of uh, needs of a user. And the idea here is that something above is closer to the user, more visible to the user, more accessible to the user than something at the bottom. The idea is that something at the top matters more to the user than something below that right so as a trivial uh, uh, you know exa example of that obviously a cup of tea matters more than whether i used electricity to heat the kettle or i used wood to heat the kettle uh, the water in the kettle right it, it really i don't care right just give me my cup of tea i just woke up i'm cranky so in that kind of context when you are mapping things you want to put things that are visible to the user uh, impact the user directly on top and things that are less visible to the user, less impactful directly on the user on the bottom, right? Now, uh, let's take a example, right? And this is a example of a company that Simon Wadley ran in the early 2000s. Uh, and it was something like Flickr today. Uh, it was called Fotango. And at that point in time, uh, when they were trying to build it, what they were trying to do is, hey, can we ask uh, users to upload photos? And I, this was a subsidiary of Canon, the camera makers. Uh, they wanted to get users to upload photos onto a website, be able to edit it, and then, uh, you know, uh, be able to print it, right? And so when they were looking at it, now I'm mixing both of these things. So when, what is the most important thing for me? The most important thing for me is, can I manipulate the image? Uh, but in 2002, manipulating the image via a web browser was magic, right? It was not really possible, 2002, 2005, that kind of a time frame. It was actually magical. You cannot repeat it on every browser. The people who know how to do it, know how to do it. Everybody else is looking at it and they're like, how the hell do you do that, right? And little less magical is online photo storage because by the time you know, I think Gmail was just getting in, people were offering, uh, there, there were photo sharing websites and things like that, uh, but they were very, very flaky, right? So that, if you see the online image man manipulation is in Genesis, the online photo storage is in custom, and between online image manipulation and online photo storage, photo storage is less visible, less directly used by the end user, right? 
uh, online image manipulation is something that you do directly. Online photo storage is important. The photo ones you don't really care about. Right? Then you think about what else is required uh, to build this business. Uh, you need payment, and to take payments, you might need a website. And obviously, the online image manipulation, online photo storage, both of them need the website. The online image manipulation needs online photo storage as well. Uh, the website is basically a couple of things. There's a CRM and there's a platform. The platform uses compute. The computer uses data center and the compute also uses power. Power is a commodity. Uh, compute is a little more of a product that is well understood compared to the data center, uh, which is slightly less uh, well understood in the 2002-2005 timeframe. Uh, obviously the compute data center and power are very, very uh, opaque and you know, end user doesn't care uh, whether they are there or not and so on. The end user may not even interact with your CRM, uh, but your end user is just interacting with the online image manipulation, the payments and the websites and so on, right? So you can kind of start seeing how putting a map like this can help us have a discussion of where are we going to put our resources and you know, which part of this map do I want to play in and why is it important to customers, right? So because let's say you're playing in, uh, you, you could win, I mean, you could play and succeed in many places in the map. Uh, for example, you could be a power provider and still win and make money in this map, right? But the end user doesn't care about your power, right? You'd have to redraw this map to have the end user as a compute, which is using your power and figure out, hey, you know what, if I'm going to provide power to a data center, is that any different from providing power to houses? And if so, what should I do differently, right? Uh, but coming back to this example, you can think of as a startup, what, are, what do I want to do? Do I want to make magic, which is the online image manipulation, online photo storage kind of stuff? Or do I want to do something that's becoming more of a product, like the payments, the website and stuff like that? Or do I want to do something to make a product into a commodity like a CRM or a website or a platform. And if I do that, then because I'm an infrastructure kind of a component, a lot more people will use me on the top, right? Versus when you build online image manipulation at the time and it's like magic, nobody else can build on top of that because nobody even knows how to use this. So where is the question of taking this and then building something on top of that, right? Now, uh, we have a company called Izuto. They built an Wadley map. I'm going to skip through that. I'm going to go through a bunch of uh, Wadley maps of different companies, uh, kind of high level uh, understanding of ours, right? Uh, so let's take Freshworks, right? Uh, and if you look at Freshworks, they are very clear that they will build in large markets where it's an online market driven by search. Uh, it's affordable. The trial is easy. There's an intuitive product, it's low touch sales. And you have engaged users who want to come and buy this, right? And so what they're doing is they're very clear, hey, I will go to an existing category, which is a product or becoming a commodity because that's where, uh, you know, there is all of these things are there. And there I will use gorilla marketing to fight in this. I will be the, you know, feisty number two in that market who tries to fight against the entrenched um, entrenched folks in that domain, and I will try to win with them, right? Uh, so they play in this landscape where it's between product and commodity, and they're very clear. In the past, they've tried to do stuff that is here, and that's not worked out well for them because the same GTM marketing motions that you use over here in this landscape, in this map, will not work if you use it in this landscape, in this map. Now I, we go to Watfix or Hiver or Talview. There are a bunch of uh, startups. Uh, some of you may know them. They were building products where there was a latent user need. Uh, the category hadn't been named yet. And they were building products that basically took stuff that companies were doing for themselves, that were custom building things for themselves and making those into product and giving that category a name to uh, do this, right? Now, in this process, you know, the need, latent user need becomes a known user need. And when it becomes a known user need, then a lot of other folks are going to come into that market. And what you need to win at a high level is, uh, if you want to win a battle like this, you can't win it alone because you cannot educate 
customers uh, at scale by yourself. So you want to educate customers along with others. And that's where the ecosystem design becomes critical. Who is taking you to market? Who is helping you educate everybody in that market? Uh, who is going to be working with you to educate people in that market, so on and so forth. So that ecosystem design uh, becomes very, very critical uh, for uh, building stuff that is going from custom to product and becoming a new category. Uh, Zenoti and a bunch of uh, vertical SaaS companies, uh, they are also in this custom built to product transition. Uh, but in this case, the custom built thing may already be a software that's working, uh, but it's not on the cloud, for example, right? And so they're replacing this uh, on-premise software with something that's on the cloud. And here what's happening is because they are very verticalized solutions. Uh, so Zenoti is for spas and uh, uh, those kind of places, spas and salons and stuff. Uh, garage plug is for garages, as the name might suggest. Uh, diet issue is for uh, nutritionists, and class pro is for uh, uh, coaching uh, uh, folks who ed tech folks who run coaching institutions and so on. Right. So in this kind of a situation, what is the game you play when you're going from custom to product, or you're going from an early product, which is an on-premise product, to a little better product, which is a on-demand. Uh, cloud product, right? So in this kind of a case, the game that you play has to be staying within the same niche to uh, deliver more and more value uh, to the business, right? And you're not educating the customer about the business value because they already understand the business value, uh, but you have to give them more and more tools to manage their business better. And you have to increase your pricing over time uh, because you don't have a large universe of uh, customers to play with. So now if you see these three different maps, right, you can understand that you can build products in anywhere on the map, but the strategy that you use uh, to win is dependent on where in the map you are playing. Uh, you can build a product which is in the extreme left here as well, like for Tango tried to do, but then you better be making real magic that matters, right? And what I mean by that is a lot of cases who can afford magic? The only people who can afford magic in the olden times were kings. Because magic needs a lot of money to create. Magic is not something that you can just do. Right? So you have to understand that if you're creating magic, how do you spread that magic? Who will believe that magic? That's very different from being in a commodity kind of a space where you know everybody wants apples, everybody knows what an apple is. I just want a good apple at a low cost. I'm fine. Right? So you have to be really clear that depending on where you are in this map, what kind of a marketing you need to do, what kind of a GTM you need to do, what kind of education you need to do for customers, how do you compete with others, how do you win with others, all are completely different, okay? So can I take some questions and then I will uh, continue with, you know, more things I can uh, draw a orderly map and do stuff like that. This covers a lot of areas. Uh, not just uh, you know agility. There's uh, all principles of uh, Six Sigma, Lean, and a whole bunch of other things. So it'll take a while to sort of the implications for it to sink in. But I see where this is going. There'll be some questions which are, which will come up soon. Sure. But do you want to expand on that? What do you mean by it has implications for agility and Lean and Six Sigma? See, it's see again. The fundamental ethos of all product-driven organizations is that you need to make a choice, right? Of what kind of positioning, what kind of ethos you follow uh, to get to a particular state of either a market capture or a maturity or whatever, right? It's a mindset and a practice. It's not the tools. So if you are at the genesis stage, you would possibly would want to use speed as a weapon, for example, faster iterations, uh, where agility becomes more critical. When you're in the product space, uh, then you are looking at when you a product or commodities, you are going further down the value chain and you're looking at efficiencies and cost differential, right? So how do you position yourself and which one of these techniques you marry or in what uh, spatial and temporal horizon is essentially what I am getting on this. If, if 
I, I, I may be completely wrong, but that's the sense I'm getting. Yeah, you're actually bang on, right? Uh, and so this is a, the Wadley map for me helped to resolve a lot of conflicts around, you know, what uh, techniques should be used uh, and why, right? Uh, oh, so I, I remember uh, reading a treatise by Sun Tzu, which was talking about similar things, but in the context of war. So, uh, and I'm trying to draw panels right now. Yeah, so Prathana, uh, I think I have gone through Wadley map before as well, uh, as part of Pazo, right? I think, uh, and now at Farmizi, where I am leading uh, some part of the product, right? There are two parts that I lead here, right? Uh, one challenge that I have had with Wadley maps is somewhere, uh, this is more like a once in a year, once in a six month thing, where you kind of just orient yourself or probably just look at how things are. But uh, is there a way to probably leverage it tactically on a, you know, say, a day in day out some sort of that kind of framework or because see at where i am i think a bunch of other product managers is uh, uh we are not revisiting strategy all the time right well, there's a huge hierarchy be. yeah right and we are somewhere there so is there a way that you know uh, we can uh, like you know a bunch of examples that we are seeing is basically the entire uh, journey of what fix probably right but like where they were how they started and how did they do right um uh, even the exercises I have done so far is I have been able to make sense out of it retrospectively, right? I, I was able to connect dots backward, right? Uh, I wanted to understand for product managers specifically on the call, is there a way that we can use it more tactically or more uh, in how would, how would you suggest we leverage it? Yeah, so the most tactical uh, use I've heard is actually one of our founders uh, in a sales pitch. Uh, the uh, customer was asking, you know, why can't we just build this ourselves? Right. And they literally, uh, you know, drew kind of sort of like a what the map and said, look, whatever you're asking for is already here. And so for you, the value of building stuff here makes no sense. You should be building stuff that's core to you, core closer to your customer. Right? Don't build stuff that's uh, away from your customer. Uh, right. So, you know, so that is as tactical as it gets, right? and they won the deal. Um, so, you know, to me, uh, the value of uh, using the Wadley map is in uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, very tactical questions that come up of, you know, should I do this or should I do that are asked in a vacuum. And when asked in a vacuum, you know, you can have an opinion, I can have an opinion. How do we come to a conclusion? A lot of actually tactical questions, if you have a Wadley map, if you look at it in the context of that Wadley map, uh, then you might realize that actually two of you are speaking about different things. And therefore, if you are uh, actually, you know, trying to converge in terms of are we talking about the same thing the same way, you might find that you're both right. And, uh, you know, what you need to do at that point in time is, is a choice that you need to make. But now with both of you on the same page. Right? Uh, and, and this kind of at some point becomes, uh, I mean, could become like, uh, you know, uh, what, what do you call it? It's, it's just something become, become something that you do, right? Uh, so today for me, when I look at a startup and I talk to a startup, uh, when we talk about product and stuff like that, I'm in my head, I'm building a Wadley map, right? I might not be drawing it out, but I'm trying to build a Wadley map based on what the person is telling me. Uh, yeah. Uh, just to add on to what you just said, Prasanna, uh, to answer Hamad, <laughs> you can use this for build versus buy decisions. You can do this when you are ranking two different ROI documents around where you are, uh, you know, trying to decide under which feature you want to build, right? And you've calculated the ROI, you've calculated the cost of delay, but you then you're still roughly at the same level and then you decide how do I work qualitatively decide which one to pick up. So this could be very, very tactical at a scrum level or even, even at a monthly planning session. It does not have to be a strategy from, and just picking up from what Russell had said. So I'll, I'll take a concrete example, right? Let's look at the cup of tea uh, kind of uh, example right now. If you are building a product and your product is the tea experience for this person, uh, now you could play at different levels and have different uh, things, right? So now you could think that, uh, you know, convenience is something that uh, somebody wants and you could pick your positioning on convenience. 
then you made a choice saying hey, we are going to be the most convenient cup of tea for example right uh, which means that you delivering that cup of tea will be uh, actually maybe why don't i just try to live map this and then we can uh, you know see if that that kind of makes sense right so now let's imagine that uh, you know a uh, user wants tea right so there's a person who wants tea right now imagine that there are two people right and that there's one person who wants like tea as a commodity right and then there's another person who wants right so are you folks getting this are you able to read the yes yes you're able to read it yes. okay cool yeah so now if you imagine that you know we're serving people who want tea right but somebody who wants tea right now as a commodity versus somebody who wants the best tea right uh and it is okay to live with uh with with something much slower and may not be uh, as replicable and stuff like that now you can imagine that uh you know there is a there is a, actually a range of tea leaves that you could buy right now let's say somebody wants tea and I, maybe i should just you know rephrase this wants tea fast right and somebody wants Uh, the best tea right now if i buy tea leaves what kind of tea leaves should i buy for somebody wants tea fast versus somebody wants the best tea any answers for fast you would want whatever is easily available cheaply available it doesn't matter the quality doesn't matter what you what matters is how quickly can you procure it right so it is a commodity right you don't want to be stuck on you know what kind of a tea am i getting kind of thing right so you want something that's at least kind of here right come on tea okay sorry for the pun right so you want this and this to be related somehow right but some now somebody wants the best tea are you going to give them this where where do you think it should be you definitely want want something which is custom picked more uh, you know tailored to a specific taste so you could for example say assam tea versus uh, i don't know uh, your english breakfast tea versus chamomile tea or whatever the hell you want to talk it would let's just call it some exotic tea right then and that do you understand that it really like by nature of it this would be far more ubiquitous far more certain you know let's say we buy you know lipton yellow label tea or tata agni tea or whatever every time you get the same thing right and if you want to make tea fast and give it to somebody and they want to have the same experience every time you have to buy and use a commodity right what will happen if you take this guy and uh if you take this guy and you make it dependent on this what will happen in that case cost value proposition uh yeah yeah be specific lead time be, be specific just don't don't say these things as uh, you know no, phrases just, these, just, these were the things that that will that will uh, yeah yeah i want you to explain it as a sentence not as a oh, phrase okay. okay so so for this person if they are looking for wants fast tea the value proposition is fairly simple i want it at a minimum quality threshold at a very low price point and it should be readily available in terms of lead time these are the three major value uh, things uh, or a vfm value for money kind of a user now if you try to force fit a exotic tea on this then you are asking for trouble because you you going to you you are going to violate one of these three dimensions so from a exotic tea perspective you are going to have to you know this tea has to be boiled for 2 minutes this tea has to be steeped for 3 minutes this tea you know is like water should be 80 degrees this tea should be you know 120 degrees you won't be able to provide certainty of service if you are using exotic teas because each of them requires something different does that make sense to everybody here yeah, yeah. So essentially what we are saying is that if we try to sell exotic tea as a commodity uh, right or uh, or we try to make it ubiquitous uh sell it over over the counter uh, everywhere uh, it doesn't make sense because it will one be uh, high priced or would 
sort of not give you a quick experience because you know it by nature it is going to be you know taking whatever time it's differentiated preparation right, right. so it's like the electricity example there are 20 types of electricity will you be able to do anything fast right. if you want to add bulbs or you want to add something else like so i had a, I had a, I had a question so yeah. uh, when we say the so that uh, uh, hi this is ayush so i i want to ask the question that when you say fast t and we say commodity uh, we are assuming that fast t and commodity are the same things while it may not be because if it is fast it means it's relatively faster which means there is a sur- component um change there is a delta and the delta is positive in terms of fastness which means it's yes. not commodity commodity is with, which is the base value or uh, uh, which in this case would probably be around cost more than about speed because if it is speed the fastest t uh, today is actually not none of those uh, uh, boiled varieties there are more premium teas which are actually faster and they cost a premium my point being that excellent point fastness is also a premium yeah excellent point right so maybe we should have this then you, and the right way okay. to do this right this is not there but this is how it should be does that make sense is that what you were saying ayush i'm i'm assuming it's ayush yeah 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 correct okay. so 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 i i'm just saying that fast speed is also a quality parameter i mean choice parameter uh, so therefore there is an element uh, uh, i mean we are choosing speed uh, and that that means it is a premium of some kind which is not obvious uh, to uh, most of us unless we do that uh, volume so but it is there is a, uh, it is a parameter of service yeah right so now if you want some to offer people best tea right can you do this does this make any sense <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, it's really very really difficult to do but uh, yeah there is i mean again the the point being that uh, so what is the definition of best if uh, yeah, for so, example we could marry both right the for the best tea if if we if we say that we have an exotic tea but it is pre made that that could be better than uh, exotic tea which takes longer to get get to the end use yeah great point right so, so 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 the point is not that there is some right answer here the point is that now we are able to have a nuanced conversation about you know if i want to make tea fast i understand that i cannot just do exotic teas i might be able to make use pre made teas which depend on exotic teas and pre made teas which depend on you know uh, commodities right now does it make sense yeah right but if i want to make like the absolute best tea and somebody wants like really the top class tea maybe there are like even you know variants of exotic tea right and there's something like a you know i don't know what it would be called ah, so, super so take the, exotic take, tea right? ah, take the rolls royce example right yeah uh, or the ferrari example correct where you where you want the best possible car yeah. and it is literally hand assembled and there are components which cannot be commoditized yeah. and you make a very very small fraction uh, in uh, in the in a given year whereas something like a volkswagen yeah. which which uh, which is what the the equivalent of the wants fast t is concerned is yeah. mass uh, mass produced generic design uh, easy to procure components and therefore fast t maruti in yeah. in india for example all right so now we are having a a fairly nuanced conversation if i were to be a product manager who is building a tea business right we are actually able to think through a lot of choices that we would be making right so now obviously right uh you know uh, it would fairly become simple that you know this exotic tea kind of a thing from a best tea perspective is closer to the user right and the super exotic tea would be much closer to the customer from a flavor perspective right uh, versus the pre made tea would be if at all they use it maybe you know their tea connoisseurs will say you know pre made teas you know cannot be the best teas as an as a just as an uh, this is an argument right but the exotic tea would actually be you know closer to the uh, somebody who is a user who's demanding the best tea uh, would find these two closer right uh, now question here these uh, lines that you're drawing to connect each one of these entities yeah. right 
does directionality matter? Uh, uh, so, or yeah, is it, is it assumed to be by direction? Uh, it, it's right now what we're saying is something above depends on something below. Forget the direction of the arrow for the moment. Okay, so it's it's uh, essentially already pre-sorted by value, which is the left left axis and right axis yes. we are talking about. Okay. Yeah. Right. Correct. So now let's think about a cup. Right? Would you put the same cup for both these people? Maybe, maybe. I mean, it, it depends on your end user. Uh, ideally, no, right? Like, ideally, no. No, why uh, not? Why not? And I could be a billionaire and still have a, a, a regular ceramic mug, or I could uh, because I'm a billionaire and I have exotic. No, no, it's not about billionaire, right? No, no, no. no, 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 no saying, somebody who wants tea versus right. somebody who wants tea fast. Would you use the same cup? I, I don't see why not. So, but there could be other perspectives. Sure. Somebody else. No feasibility wise, of course. I mean, you would. Uh, it's, it's obviously possible, but. Yeah, I think I would always think about someone uh, looking for a best tea as a premium uh, thing and, and everything about it should, you know, should uh, radiate that premium feel. So while it is exotic, the cup and the environment and everything, you know. Should... But, then, but then you're building an experience. Uh, we are talking about uh, just the cup. The cup is a commodity. So, uh, no, no, no. Hey, okay, great, great points. Right. So let's just. Take, take a short step back, right? So this is actually a great point because if you're talking about different needs, then that should also be there in the map, right? Yeah. Okay. Fair, fair. So you could have a cup made of gold for. No, so, so, so no, no, no. Is, is I'm the, saying that's the primary need. question. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, 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 so I, I'm asking that which is the primary question. It's a two-dimensional map on which we're trying to do more than two dimensions. So I don't know if it's related to oddly uh, maps at all, but the moment you put more than two dimensions in the same map. There are issues that come up in any such. No, no, no let's uh, not go setting. high. Let's not go like hypothetical and all that shit. Right? No, so the, okay. The reason I'm tell me what we need to add. So perceptive value is different from uh, so form and function on the same. Uh, I'm saying right now what you're showing showing is left to right is uh, re left is more. So just tell me what to add, function. boss. Just tell me what you what you want to add. What what add, are we missing? Add a cup. I would add a cup. And and uh, which is essentially a commodity, but a premium cup versus a uh, regu uh, regular cu uh, cup or a kulhar, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so cup is commodity, regular versus handcrafted, for example. Yeah, sure. So uh, premium, sorry, premium. what what is the value that you wanted to add? Uh, in what dimension, Prasanna? Sorry, no, not you. Uh, the other person uh, was speaking. Uh, Hey, somebody else was speaking. No, I don't know who was speaking. Ayush. Ayush. No, I, I just said, uh, yeah, you can just put a porcelain or a handcrafted uh, cup. Sure. Okay. No, but what value did you want to add? You said that. What? So, you the you, value, I, right? I don't, I, I, um, I, I don't understand the word value here. Uh, in what context? No, no. We is, were it, discussing is, it a, is it a, is a high quality, achha, value in terms of. The customer. What is the, what what value okay. is the customer seeking, right? So 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 basically, yeah. So perception. Sorry. Yeah, one is perception. Sorry, somebody else yeah. was adding. Uh, yeah, I was saying that uh, in case of fast tea, they may want like a disposable cup, something that they can carry. Ease of carrying can be like a ah right. So wants tea fast, right? And maybe wants uh, you know mobile mobility. Yeah, that's a very good point. Right? And now mobility may depend on uh, a new thing. So this could be a regular cup. Right? And we could have a handcrafted cup. Clearly the handcrafted cup doesn't have mobility, right? And then you might have a... So a mobility be on, on, the, on, the, on the left, on the left and... Developed up the other right? Just saying. I don't know. No, no. I'm just putting it here. We could have that discussion, right? Okay, okay, okay. And we can think through why uh, why the, why the case would be right.
Does this make sense to people? Because does it make sense to say that look, the best somebody who wants the best tea doesn't necessarily care about mobility, but somebody who wants tea fast probably cares about mobility. If they want to care about mobility, then they will go for a disposable cup. If they don't care about mobility, but they want their tea fast, they might be okay with the regular cup. Yes, it does. So now the discussion that we were having has that discussion been kind of uh, you know have we moved on past that discussion? Right. So yeah, it kind of makes uh, you know. So basically, what we are saying is that it it kind of brings brings in more nuances to the discussion and helps us in bringing everyone's perspective on one um, you know one page you know, or one place where everyone can sort of discuss and debate the articulation better. Is that? Yeah, fair? absolutely. Right. So now, if you think about it, uh, the handcrafted cup, the regular cup, disposable cup, all these are what uh, a part of what Simon uh, Wadley calls a pipeline. They actually can replace each other. Right. So you could use one instead of each other, instead of the other. And if you look at it, the handcrafted cup is the one that's most expensive, perhaps custom to that store, uh, you know, not something that can be replicated, is so on and so forth, has a you know certain quality standard, but even within lots, you might have varying quality, so on and so forth. A regular cup is a product, you get it, uh, you know, but you know, the process for a regular product is a regular cup is that you know you you uh, you give it to the customer, you give a fresh cup to a customer, they give you that cup back, now you have a process uh, to clean the cup, right? Right, And so hopefully, you know, these two, these two will depend on, you know, cleaning the cup, unless you're like gifting the cup uh, to every customer, right? These two would need uh, that the handcrafted cup and the regular cup would be would need a cleaning process, right? But the disposable cup is more of a utility. Do you see what I'm saying? With respect to the regular cup and the disposable cup, from a business perspective, the disposable cup is more of a utility. You use it, it's done. I don't have any other processes to worry about. So therefore I am putting disposable cup to the right as more of a commodity, more of a utility than the regular cup, which is more of a product. I might, Kirti, if Kirti I were so brave, I might ask, put it here. Prasanna, uh, uh, thank you. This is this has been extremely useful. Uh, I, I was thinking on on adding on top of this, as somebody sure. was mentioning previously, uh, most of what we've drawn out is on prior experience since that we've had in 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 different formats for regular tea or for best tea or whatever that is. Right, which basically means uh, we are drawing this map currently, basis hindsight or basis our own impressions. What happens if we want to uh, project into the future? And let's say, taking just this as an example, I want to say, hey, I want to create a product which is best tea fast, let's say, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and how will this map help me in figuring out what are the elements uh, 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 that we have captured here that need to be, let's say, reworked or prioritized or, you know, looked at much deeper to create that new category that I want to create, which is best tea fast. Any, any such usability for the Wadley map? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we actually, ironically, dis discussed that earlier, right? Isn't it? Which is maybe if you want to do tea fast and you know that you can't use exotic teas or super exotic teas, but you can use pre-made teas to... Uh, Make no, no, I'm saying, I'm saying best tea fast. If I want to merge... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tea. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So somebody else had said that, right? So, so basically, can we create new products which do not exist today? Yeah, that's absolutely. the broader correct. question. Correct, correct. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, so that's what I'm saying here. So let's say I'm saying best tea fast. Right? I'm just putting it for the moment. So maybe it should be... You know, maybe we are moving this into product and we are saying, hey, this is actually the thing. Right? This is the next. And both these are these are not commodities yet, right? So we'll say both these are actually products that are competing with each other. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fair, fair, absolutely. 
Okay. Yep. So if you say best T fast, we probably want to say, okay, fine. They want mobility, right? What else do they want? Right. We know we can't do this. So we, we either need a different process for this. Right. And which is yeah, where so you this can comes make in. A exotic and pre-made uh, exotic goes to pre-made and pre-made goes to fast. B, 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 best yes. I'm, exactly. I'm just like, yeah. But if you can do this, then you can get there. Right. So there is a, uh, you know, uh, I mean, guys, just, just to be very clear, right. I'm in uh, chapter one and two of uh, Simon's books book. Okay. He has some uh, 13 chapters or 25 chapters. I don't remember. And uh, it is uh, not linear in progression. It is like exponential in progression in terms of uh, how these things play together. Right. So I'm just giving you stuff that is in like chapter one, two, three or something like that. Prasanna, uh, if I may ask, like, would you be, would you be able to give us a glimpse of what, what, what else is there? Like in the advanced chapters? Um, yeah. So, you know, we are talking about, I, yeah. I'm talking at a very high level about Genesis custom built product and commodity, right? Here mm -hmm. we are assuming that it's a product. It's something material, right? It could actually be uh, knowledge and this access would be different for knowledge. It could be data. This access would be different for data. It could be practices and this access would be different for practices. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you an example of practices, right? Uh, so, you know, I'm assuming everybody here is tech. And so, um, you know, when we had uh, servers uh, sitting in data centers, uh, there was a branch of, uh, you know, practices, technology practices that evolved over like 30, 40 years. And that was called, you know, uh, sysadmin practices, right? And it would, you know, if you're a system admin, you know, you'd have a Red Hat certification, you'll have a CCNA, Cisco certification, you'll have a bunch of certifications and you do all those things. And uh, then you know how to set up a one is to one uh, high scale, uh, you know, large machine uh, with the network, everything redundant, all kinds of failover possible and stuff like that, right? Now that skill set was becoming a commodity, right? You could hire system admins, they would all know the same things. They'd all come up with similar architectures. And of course, I'm talking about, you know, I'm not talking about the highest scale, but I'm talking about, you know, an average data center with, which required some scale. Uh, you would hire a system admin and they'd build it, build the architecture for you. And then you would implement the architecture, right? Now, that process itself became something like a commodity, right? The technology process of how to build uh, scalable uh, architectures with uh, commodity, I mean, not commodity, but with, you know, uh, servers, right? Now, when VMs came and people started using VMs, the first people who used VMs were the system admins. And they're like, man, these VMs are puny, they're pathetic. Uh, they have a high, have much higher failure probability. You know, I can't do my architecture that I use with my servers of with these puny VMs, it just doesn't work. So they're a waste of time. Every, the world will stay in data center, data center will continue to grow, right? And so there had to be an emergent new set of processes that were somewhere, you know, here. So maybe I'll, uh, I don't know, we can connect this quickly or just delete it. Let's see if this works. Yes, it did work, very good. So let's say that, you know, um, servers, right? They're so talking about servers. Uh, they are here. And then you had a process, right? Called, let's, let's put it here for, for the moment, sysadmin, right? And so the sysadmin process is what you need to make servers work, right? Without sysadmin, uh, servers won't work. Then VMs came and VMs were utilities, right? But the process for, you know, using VMs started off as a Genesis thing, right? And the Genesis use of VMs was very pathetic, right? It would just be like how sysadmins would use, 
uh, servers, right? Uh, but what happened is, uh, I think, I, I don't know how to, I don't exactly remember how to do this thing. Evolve. Fusion. Um, DevOps. Works. No, oops. You might want to call that SRE. Huh? You might want to call that SRE. Okay, it looks like I might have, uh, you know, uh, offended somebody. But sure. No, no, not offended. Uh, this, <laughs> this is more, uh, you know, it this is evolved over a period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of maybe maybe this is maybe this is what I would do, right? So DevOps evolved, right? And now it's called SRE. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Right. So now, obviously, for VMs, you know, um, you know, if you use VMs with SRE as a practice, then you can use them as a commodity or utility, right? Otherwise, you're just using it as a product. Does that make sense? for people or is it too uh, confusing it makes sense to me but again i am a cto and i have seen 20 years of technology evolution so <laughs> sure anybody else have any questions thoughts hopefully it's making sense but you know, if it's not not much i can do about it but you should uh, questions thoughts folks I think I didn't quite get what, uh, when you said that if you're using VMs um, with SRE, then it's a commodity, otherwise it's a product. So if, if you can- So let's say I'm a system admin and I get VMs. What would I do? How, what is the architecture I would use? Would I use the architecture in such a way that the architecture that I'm creating, would it uh, use the functions of a VM, which are make it commodity and utility? What I mean by that is as a system admin, I might say, Look, my servers need to be, you know, 128 GB RAM. I will have one server. If that fails, it will fail over to the other server. Both of them will have the exact same state. I will have some, you know, connection between those two, which maintain state. And they'll be in the same state. If this one fails, it goes to switch. It uh, flips to this, and the end user will not know any difference. That's what I do as a system. Right. Can oh. I do the same thing with VMs? If I do the same things with VMs, will my solution be something that uses the uh, abilities of a uh, utility? But is it just the process that has changed? Is also the commodification of servers have gone further on the right? Which that's anyway. To... That's a given, right? But that would that wouldn't that be a I mean I know that's a I, I don't want to create controversy here, but isn't that a bigger factor in the change of no uh, the movement? No. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Because VMs have been around since IBM put them on their mainframes in 1960s and 70s. Interesting. Right. And VMs in Linux have been around since 2001 2 So uh, I I can give you a lot of history, Ayush. Uh, maybe we take this offline. But I can yeah, see take this up because I, I, I am yeah. of the opinion that there has to be change enough in the technology underlying technology for this to make sense. But yeah, I don't know enough that about is, this uh, as much as you went. You, you need uh, a lot of history. Yeah. That is necessary but not sufficient. Fair, right? Fair, fair, it's fair. when Absolutely. people change their practices that things change. When people and, use something yeah. new just the same way as they use something old, then things don't change. Someone go ahead. Hey, thanks, Vijwal. Uh, Prashanna, I have a question about, um, so we saw a lot of examples when companies move around or the products move around the x-axis, how the strategies should change. Yeah. I wanted some perspective about the y-axis because, say, for example, what should, what would change uh, when 
you go about building a product where the value is very perceptible versus uh, somewhere it is not very perceptible to the end user how does that come into account yeah are, are you in a startup and asking this question or are you in a large enterprise and asking this question i am currently working on my own startup right and so if you're working on a startup and you're selling something that is low on the value axis how do you think what is going to happen to that sale when uh, recession happens so when we say uh, low on the value axis is is it the perception of the value i mean is it the visibility of the value or is it like say for example no, it's it... actual value right both are like very tied together it's it's a little bit uh, hard for me to visualize that if you can give me an example maybe uh, i'll sure so let's look at the t thing again no maybe that will that's yes yeah. easy i'm grateful that i did not erase it Okay, that's what I usually end up doing. Right? Let's look at the T thing, right? And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna say like, I mean, just just take a take a look at this and imagine the demand for best T right. versus wants T fast. Right. Right. And the handcrafted cup versus regular cup. Right. and the uh, you know pre made tea here versus exotic tea right versus commodity so just look at this this kind of a triangle right mm -hmm. when you know handcrafted cup would be like closer to this person than the regular cup presumably in some way shape or form right uh, but if somebody wants mobility then the disposable cup is probably even more uh important for them correct is that like a fair thing can we think about i mean would you agree broadly with that roughly okay so this y axis is based on the perception of the end user say if i am yeah it's a value ascribed by the end user got it got it i'm just trying to understand what the y axis actually meant and what are the implications of this say for example um i am somebody who puts a lot of emphasis on handcrafted cup Mm -hmm. uh what would that do i mean what what do we derive from this analysis yeah so does the tea matter more or the handcrafted cup matter more it, you asking me okay it it, yeah, would, yeah. Huh? it would be the tea right so let's say you're making handcrafted cups are you going to have a higher margin or this is a super exotic tea guy have going to have a higher margin okay that way right now uh from a competition standpoint right are you as a handcrafted cup guy going to have more competition or is the super exotic tea guy going to have more competition and how does this map answer that like which which guy is going to have more competition well you know something that's lower in value can be replaced more easily because it's is not so high in my value right uh it could be high in value but it's still a commodity right like like say can that be possible like like no i like can take handcrafted cup from you or i can take handcrafted cup from someone else okay isn't it okay i might i won't take more time i'll i might take some time to but understand i'm myself. just saying from a directional perspective right makes sense yeah Cool, cool. Thank you for this. Looks like we are losing participants as well. So, does anybody else have any questions or anything specific that you want me to go over, or you know, whatever we can? Because if there are fewer people and we have like fourteen minutes, thirteen minutes left, are there uh, are there uh, more? I mean, uh, is this like you said? It it works in a lot of cases, like processes and uh, so. So, is there are there things that it doesn't work with, like? Uh, i mean is there a is there a place you would say that no i would not recommend wordly maps in this use case uh, or for this purpose are there examples of that uh, as with all frameworks right so it's a model of the world right it's not the real world uh but Fair. in the context of hey i have users i have they have things that they value i have things that i'm you know building or selling or 
you know, acquiring or whatever, all of those kind of things. I don't know of any other tool which allows you to map it in a way where, you know, for me, the value of this conversation and value of building worldly maps and having these kind of conversations it's helped a lot is that we were going towards a disagreement in terms of, you know, uh, disposable cups versus regular cups versus handcrafted cups. And by putting it on a map, that argument got diffused fairly quickly. Right, absolutely. So this is going back and forth. So this is a this is a map uh, basis which it is easier to discuss and articulate uh, points that are, which might be debatable or we might be seeing it differently between seven people or three people. So it's a good way to map that uh, you know uh, and then put it onto a map and see where do we stand or what do we believe uh, on some of these parameters. Yeah, because we as humans, we are very visual creatures, right? We have a huge amount of bandwidth between our eyes and our brain. And so what you can get from a map with a shift is you create a shared context, which is very strong. Right, yeah. right, right. And the everybody therefore be, huh. agrees on the same thing. Oh, right, got it, got it, got it. And we could argue, right? Hey, you know what? This is not commodity. This is still product. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever, right? But then you know, you know, we would always say, you know, but you know what, the wants mobility is more of a commodity requirement than the bestie, right? We're agreed on that. Right, right, right. So a lot of things are actually, you know, discussions that where because we are talking in words, we don't we cannot sequence, we cannot order. Right, right. No, so this is this is uh, this is amazing. I mean, thanks to both Ujwal and you. <laughs> Otherwise, at least people like we would have come come to these things much later. But yeah, th thanks so much, uh, both. Uh, I mean, you and Ujwal on this. I mean, uh, thanks for doing this. I guess so, as you go through more chapters, uh, you should let Ujwal know so that we could we could do one more of these later at a later point of time, sometime in the year. Oh, I've uh, actually uh, taught this now to you know more than a few hundred scholars. So I've I've read the entire book back and forth a couple of times. Oh wow! Nice, nice, nice. So I use this in my business. <laughs> Uh, no, I think I what he what he to... meant he he is covering in this session is only chapter one and three uh, one two three yeah. uh, you know <laughs> he definitely I think is so, uh, is good at uh, the entire thing. Hamad, uh, go ahead with your question, please. Uh, Prasanna, I know I, I have very weird questions, but I think no, one no. I think one point that you made back, uh, when you're presenting about the fresh uh, fresh works one well, example was the latent need well apart. right? Uh, as PMs, as uh, even as founders, right? Many a times. Uh, there is some latent need, right? Uh, and uh, by, while I can map out this worldview of how the need looks like for my customer, uh, most likely the customer doesn't realize. Yes. Uh, what would you suggest to, because there are times where we need to push the agenda because this is what we have, right? Right. And the user, yeah. don't, so how do you, is there a way or maybe, you know, some other framework? I don't know how. how is there any guidance? Yeah, yeah. so why, why don't you pick up a latent need in the T example itself? That you think this best tea drinker has a latent need. Maybe the quality of tea itself, right? It's a super exotic tea, so right? We put yeah. super exotic tea, but within that what? And it's basically range, right? From super exotic tea, exotic tea, right now, maybe commodity. Uh, so so I, in the interest of time, I'll just suggest something, right? Data packaging. I, I just suggest something in the interest of time, if that's okay with you folks. Yeah. How important is aroma to this? Yeah, fair. Good, good, good point. Yeah, pretty important. Especially for exotic teas. Right. Now, yeah. how many people will yeah. be able to articulate that? May not be. Right? Yeah, not, not be, not be. Which is why I said date. Date is actually a stand-in for uh, aroma. In this which case. Which one? Sorry? Uh, date. Date of packaging. I mean, the date sure. on which the... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we're not disagreeing here, right? Now, aroma might depend on uh, the something like my uh, logistics process. You yeah, know, logistics process is commodity. But if I want aroma, I might need to have a kick ass logistics process. Yeah. Right? Does it make sense, guys? Now, yeah. latent need may be aroma, which then depends on the uh, logistics process. Uh, but what about, you know, another process, which is, you know, uh, cafe hygiene. I'm just making things up as I go. 
but now what kind of room freshener do i use in the cafe what kind of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, what do you call it uh, uh, sanitizers do i use in the cafe yeah lighting ambience everything can be you know yeah just staying with the aroma right right let's say i buy the cheapest hand sanitizer yeah that would actually uh interact with the aroma and you know negative yeah, way and i use the cheap hand sanitizer on the table after every visit <laughs> right you know. what happens to you know what is the point of my logistics process being very fast and getting me the tea right. in a week after it's plucked right now so to hamad's point hamad you were saying what's the later need now you may actually like depending on who you're taking this to right you could say hey you know what for something to be qualified as the best tea these are the parameters right and ask them hey you know which of these do you value and they might say aroma right even though they would not have come up with it, with it by themselves uh, and more importantly most of the times what happens is that people tell you something that's important and then you don't have the rest of the value map mapped out in a way that you can actually deliver that right let's say yeah i am going to get you the best tea and i'm spending you know 500 rupees a gram to get the best tea and then you know i put it on the cheapest courier because you know that's what we always do and so the you know the 500 gram 500 rupee per gram tea is coming along with the you know 100 rupees per 100 grams tea and they're all shipped together they take two we you know whatever four weeks to come by boat uh and they're in a high humidity environment in the sea and they're coming so what's happening there now you can also see that the logistics process for a commodity uh versus a super exotic tea uh would need to be different most like is it making sense yep and in one way hamad the logistics process being different for a super exotic tea versus a commodity is itself a related need for the tea and the aroma not the user uh, the, this yeah so this definitely yeah, yeah, how, how much does it answer your question though uh i think uh, what it makes me realize is um, if i feel that something is latent need for the customer like customer doesn't value then basically what that means probably i have not mapped out the customer and possibly what all i can offer right like as prasanna was mapping this out i was like ha ye to maine bhi nahi socha right uh to some extent yes it does so uh, by the way the, is the y axis always is it a defined y axis whether the y axis is only going to be visible and visible value or is that something that we did when we begin the session i I'm, i wasn't there in the first five uh, minutes it it is always the vis- value visible versus so which invisible. means that visibility and visibility got it so which means that the end user visibility or uh, visibility of the value is a uh, okay got it that uh, that makes a lot of sense why it is okay got it got it got it yeah just think of the y axis as just a scaffolding right it's just relative value that matters Not right absolutely. right absolutely 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 i understood 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 yeah so the value in the eyes of the customer like whatever based on whatever their current knowledge is right so if it's a latent need the value might be very low um you know uh, because the visibility the value like, yeah like so, there are ways like as an example if you say exotic tea and i say okay packaging now if i open the packaging in front of the person who's on the table on an exotic table with a porcelain cup uh, the suddenly the perceptive value of the product goes up although the product so, actually has not changed Into the packet, right? So I'm just saying that those kind of elements will come into play as well. So we will therefore try to make higher visible value, which is I mean it's an amazing thing because we forget it when uh, a lot of times. So yeah, that's a very interesting way to sort of look at the world because then we cannot forget the ultimately what matters is the is the perception of value in customer. And you you also can bring up the fact that different customers may have different things at different levels of value may hold. different things for different levels of value because the person who cares about the best tea here doesn't care about right, mobility right. and doesn't care about the disposable cup uh prasanna question yep uh, is there a way to like uh, highlight or use 
you know some visual tools to sort of like lay out these journeys or uh, like understand them in a more let's say uh, uh, like free flowing text kind of a way because it does become a bit overwhelming i guess after a point yeah so you can actually play with it in a nice way where you basically when you remove the commodity components right it actually removes the links as well so i use it to tell a story sometimes uh i'll just try to see if i can do that right now okay so i will comment out this i will this i'll comment out this Right. So now I I could I could use this to tell the story. If that's what you want, right? So let's say we have a couple of people. Some somebody wants to be fast, and uh, you know uh, they want uh, you know somebody else wants really good tea. So you know uh, for the person who wants tea fast, they also want you know mobility, right? uh and so they want mobility and so for mobility you know we need a disposable cup and so if somebody wants tea fast then we really want to provide them with uh, like pre made tea and that's how you know uh, and the pre made tea will basically depend on commodity uh tea right and that's how we will uh basically you know do the stuff versus for somebody who wants the best tea uh, what we're basically going to do is we're going to have like exotic tea that uh you know we we give them right or we give them a choice of super exotic tea and we're going to have a handcrafted cup for them uh, but then handcrafted cups uh, need to be cleaned right and so that's kind of uh, you know what will happen uh, because you know we're not using disposable cups did that make sense yep yep yeah yeah so I, very interestingly i mean just sort, sort of having a an anecdote here i mean uh, i obviously you've not connected pre made tea and disposable cup but today i was having you know a a, a pre made tea in a disposable cup like packaged together <laughs> this is a startup who actually gifted me uh, you know a sample yeah. with, which was pre made tea in a disposable cup and i just uh, you know added water hot water to it and yeah. you can right so i think it also kind of act can act as a potential you know discovery uh okay. you know and innovate like so things that you could like are disconnected can be connected and, and innovation can happen so yeah pretty cool thank you so much prasanna um thank you uh the product folks uh you know for uh making me do, do this and uh uh thank you head start for uh, providing uh, the uh, zoom uh, you know and and the platform where we can all connect and uh, have the session thank you so much prasanna for taking out time and and doing this for us um and we would uh, definitely love to have uh, more you know in depth sessions sometime as well sure absolutely my pleasure see you folks tonight